Today we got some shoes news, some flagship news, and a semi-fixed game. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. VR has been a pretty decent experience so far, but there are definitely things that get you out of the immersion. One of those things is of course moving around. Personally, there is only one type of locomotion in VR that works for me, and that is floating around in space using boosters like an Echo Arena. Teleportation is alright, but it's just not the most immersive experience. Well, Google is apparently working on that because they are patenting a pair of motorized VR roller skates. The patents only became public last week, but they were filed back in May of this year. The idea is to have footwear that would negate your walking motion to keep you in a safe zone thanks to wheels on your shoes. They offered four different examples for the footwear. One is basically just four motorized wheel on a platform, great for walking but bad for rotating on a flat foot. The second one is an omnidirectional wheel that can move in all directions, kind of like what you can find on forklifts. Making that one fit a shoe and not break under your weight might be a bit of a challenge. The third figure looks like tank treads. This could work but has about the same issues as the first one. And the last figure shows a sort of spiraling system that I don't quite understand. While this idea is definitely more advanced than the uh, hold you by the waist and slippery shoes Virtuix Omni, a similar but opposite concept has been tested before and does present some issues. I present to you the Infinideck. Instead of shoes doing the work, it's the treadmill that moves in all directions. I link the video down below if you haven't watched it before, but Destin from Smarter Every Day visited a company working on that system. It's a small company and they still have a ways to go, but the math and programming involved in that system could be ported over to footwear. Now Google might be patent hogging or just patenting this stuff years in advance, so I wouldn't hold my breath on it coming anytime soon, but it's nice to see that they're looking into the future of VR. In smartphone news, a report from the Wall Street Journal indicates that on the 10th anniversary of Samsung's flagship line of phones, three flagship models will be available. One of them, codenamed Beyond X, will apparently feature a 6.7 inch display, 6 cameras, and support for 5G connectivity. Wait, 6 cameras? That seems a little excessive, no? I mean, honestly, I like the idea. While Google focuses all of its work on software for its camera system, it's nice to see that not everyone is following along. We need companies to take different paths to see what works best. What about you guys? What are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. As for 5G, I mean every phone is going to have it at some point so why not start with the S10? Then in the forever expanding world of Amazon's assistant, it seems like it is about to expand to new Bluetooth devices. In a blog post published yesterday, Amazon announced that its Alex mobile accessory toolkit is now widely available to developers. This means that pretty much any manufacturer can integrate Alex into their headset. Not only that, but they can do so without having to develop separate apps or Alex skills for the devices. This is probably the most frustrating thing about the system, and I'm glad it's getting Getting fixed. A lot of devices require you to create an account on a separate app, set up the device there, and then download an Alex skill for you to be able to control that device using your Echo. If they could just do the same thing with smart lighting and smart switches, it would be greatly appreciated. In gaming, it seems like Bethesda finally fixed something that has been plaguing its game engine for the past 10 years. In case you didn't know, previous Bethesda games like Skyrim and the Fallout series were locked at 60 FPS because of a problem with the engine. You could unlock the FPS with mods, but the higher the frame rate was, the faster the game would run. And by faster, I mean your character would literally move faster in the game if let's say you were looking at the ground because it would be easier to render, thus higher FPS. This was due to the 64Hz tick rate of the game engine for updating AI and physics. In Fallout 76, the same problem was present and their solution was to lock the FPS to 63. In their newest update, they unlocked the frame rate and fixed the engine so the game would run properly at higher frame rates. The only thing left to fix is the FOV slider, which is the next thing in the works for the game. Sure, it still has some issues like server stability, but at least they're working on some of the bigger problems problems gamers were experiencing and asking for it to get fixed. 
And that is pretty much it for the news, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to drop me a like on this video down below. Uh, the comment section is here in case you have any questions for me. And as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. I just got a notification right there. Somebody just liked the comment. Anyways, as always, stay frosty and I'll see you on the next one.